Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we are going to do 10 Lego investing tips. Now it's been a fair few years since I have done a Lego investing tips video. In fact, the last one may have been three or four years ago when I did five Lego investing tips. So definitely we are due an update. Now this video is going to have 10 tips in, so it's going to be a little bit longer and it's going to be more oriented for the beginner, for someone, let's say, who's been been doing this a few months who wants to kind of add to their repertoire of ways in which they can maximize the potential of their lego buying but also this will equally work as well for someone who's been doing it a year or two years now if you've been doing it as long as i have which is roughly about six years then obviously a lot of these things you're going to know about you're going to be aware of but still there's always things we can learn there's always different things we can take from even the same information that we already know there's different ways we can think about it and different ways we can look at it so it may very well be that you do pick up a few things from this video even if you have been doing it for quite a while so with that being said let's get on with the first tip now this is kind of something you're already doing right now but number one is watch lego youtube channels but i don't just mean the lego investing channels i don't just mean let's say watching my videos on lego investing or or another great channel unfortunately they don't do videos anymore but they do have a back catalog still up it is brick picker and they did a brilliant six or seven part series on lego investing for the beginner or for someone who's kind of fairly new to lego investing um, a few years back now i've watched that series multiple times as you would expect I've really enjoyed it and I appreciate it, of course, from a content perspective and a YouTuber's perspective, but I also appreciate it from a Lego investor's perspective. And what Brick, Brick Picker has taught me or the Brick Picker YouTube channel has taught me uh, has been invaluable, really. So I would say go over there. I'll possibly leave a link down below, but you could always just type in Brick Picker into YouTube and watch that channel because that will give you some great grounding as a lego investor but i don't just mean lego investing channels and believe me there's loads of lego investing channels out there these days when i first started doing lego investing videos it was practically just me the brick show and brick picker it was three or four people doing it there really wasn't anyone doing it that much there was of course people talking about reselling lego loads of people talking about reselling lego but not necessarily investing more long term in lego uh, but these days there's loads of lego investing channels loads over in america i've not really seen many if any actually in the uk there might be the odd one out there um, but generally over in america there's loads of them now so you've got a, a great wealth of knowledge there to, to pick through and, and to watch those Lego investing videos. But really to know the market, we don't just want to watch Lego investing videos, but we want to watch the Lego channels, the fans of Lego, the AFOLs as they're called, the adult fans of Lego. And these are people, for example, my two favourite people at the moment at least, and this has changed over the years because I've been watching Lego channels for years, is m &R Productions and Brixar. Now, Bricks are, I've always loved. For, for five years, I've watched him or so. And I've always loved him. I've, I've gone away from him and then come back again, gone away and come back on a few occasions. But I've always loved him. And I've always loved and valued his Lego knowledge. And m and Productions is a similar age to me. So obviously, I've got that connection there. And I really do enjoy his vlogs, his Lego vlogs. And uh, these people will give you an idea of what is hot in the market, what the Lego community enjoy, what they like. And, and they will also tell you in the comments, in the videos themselves, what they don't like. And that is invaluable from an investing perspective, because if you know what the Lego community don't like, then you can use that knowledge to think, hmm, maybe it's not best I buy this set after all to invest in. Because all of this LEGO community doesn't like it and they're not really too crazed about that particular theme. So actually I'm going to just reevaluate that theme and think, actually maybe I won't invest in that. So you see, watching not only LEGO investing channels, but the LEGO channels themselves is invaluable. 
because MR Productions or Brickzar, they are a representation on YouTube of the minds of all of these other fans. Because a lot of the time, all of the other fans will share similar, I mean, sometimes slightly differing, but similar opinions as the person they are watching as well. It's like resellers, for example. When we watch a reseller, generally, I mean, of course, there are arguments and disagreements and differing opinions, but generally, a lot of the time, we will share a like mind and it'll be a, a sort of collective opinion of, of what's going on. And so that means that if you watch those videos and you even scroll down the comments, you'll be able to get that very, very rich and valuable information of what might be good to buy. So that's tip number one. Number two is utilize com comparison sites. Now, this is a little bit different. I don't mean obviously utilizing sites like eBay or Amazon or anything like that. We'll get onto those things later in this video, I'm sure. But I'm meaning comparison sites, sites like Google Shopping. There's also a great app. Now, I've, I've not got it at the moment, but I did use it for a very, very long time. And that's called Price Buy. And that compares loads of different shops on the app and it shows you discounts as well when discounts pop up and you can go on there and you can of course go through and buy the Lego from those shops that are the cheapest at the time. And you can type in any set number, same on Google Shopping, you can type in any set number and you can utilize the comparison for the deals, but not only for the deals, also what you can utilize it for is checking to see the demand, sorry, not the demand, the supply. Checking to see the supply of that set. For example, you might have a set that the, the su supply has actually gone down quite drastically. There's not many places selling it on Google Shopping or on the comparison app uh, Price Buy. There's not, for some reason, not many shops are selling it. That might be an indication that actually it's a good set to invest in. Because sometimes when I've had sets like that, Maybe it's a set that's just retired or it's coming to the end of retirement. And, and, and maybe think places are going out of stock of it. And, and that might indicate that, that, that there is actually quite a high demand. And, uh, and obviously, there's not much supply because it's not on uh, all of these sites on Google Shopping. There's very limited supply there of different sites selling it. So therefore, you might think to yourself, well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to look into that set. I'm going to look on Brick Set. I'm going to see when it was first available on Lego Shop at home. I'm going to think to myself, well, hang on, that's been available for a year and a half, two years now. Uh, it's a good theme. It might be Speed Champions or it might be something like that. It's a nice looking set. Maybe I should try and see if there's anywhere available that I can currently get my hands on that set. And then, of course, um, uh, obviously add it to my collection and then see what it does. And of course, you want to be thinking about it. You want to utilize all the things in your in your armory, in, in your knowledge base to be able to know that that's a decent set to invest in. And there's loads of other different things which are going to be inclusive also in a few of these coming tips that you need, need to think about. But ultimately, doing that is another thing that you can tick off and that you can think, ah, well, maybe this is a good set to invest in. So utilizing comparison sites is very, very important. And I'm always going on Google Shopping. Whenever I type in a set, I go on Brick Set, I go on Google Shopping, I go on eBay, I go on Amazon, all these different places. I am there looking at it. I go on Lego Shop at Home. I go. I sometimes even go on the American uh, Lego Shop at Home. And I go on that one and see what's on there. Is it retired over in America? Is it is it not retired, etc.? All these sorts of things. There's loads of different places I go to, to to just build up my knowledge, to allow some sort of eagle eye view, shall we say, of that set, of what that set is doing. So that's number two. Number three, Brick Set is your Bible. And what I mean by this is the website Brick Set. It's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It, you should be going on there all the time. It, you literally just type in a set number and there's loads of information that comes up on that set. You get a lovely picture, crystal clear picture of the set. You get the dimensions of the box. You get when it was available on Lego Shop at Home in the UK, in the US, in I think Australia or other places as well, France, all the rest of it. You get so much information. You get piece count, set number, of course, although you should already know that if you're typing it in. 
there's literally i can't even recall how much information is on that page there's so much information just on 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 each set and also not only that it obviously means that you can track the set and you can think well hang on this has been out for a year or two maybe it's gonna retire soon or oh this has only just come out this came out this time over in the us and it came out this time over in the uk etc and you can see the prices or respective prices there and everything but not only that on brick set you can go and you can buy lego and you can literally compare different uh, sites as well so for example there's a page literally dedicated to, to lego deals so you can go on there and you can go on the amazon site the amazon tab you can go on the lego shop at home tab you can even go on places like for example the uh, bricklink tab you can even go on iwoot as well there's an iwoot tab on there etc and you can compare prices on there and discounts on there uh, on that website and then go through through the links to those websites to then obviously access that discount and it'll take you direct to the amazon page direct to the iroot page direct to the bricklink page where you can actually buy that set at that specific discount so you can go on there now that is of course what we would call low hanging fruit which is uh, deals that are very easy to access and so everyone's going to access them so it's sometimes worth doing a bit more digging and being able to actually access the, the harder deals, shall we say. But nonetheless, Brickset is brilliant for that as well. There's so many different things that you can do on Brickset, and it, it's just a great site to really utilize within your LEGO investing. If you're not utilizing that set as a LEGO investor, then it's gonna be harder for you to, to invest in LEGO because it gives all of the information that you need uh, with regards to thinking about investing in a Lego set. Of course, you still need to go on eBay or Amazon. Of course, you still need to go on Lego Shop at home. Of course, you still need to do these other things that I'm mentioning in this video, but it gives you a very, very strong basis. So utilizing brick set is a very, very good thing for a Lego investor. Number four, look for freebies, special events. Now, here in the UK, we used to have Unfortunately, we don't have it anymore. We used to have a free poly bag given out. I believe it was by Daily Mail, the newspaper of the Daily Mail. And of course, you don't have to just go in and get one. You could try and wangle it so you get more than one paper, so you get more than one free poly bag. You've got family and friends. Maybe family and friends could go in for you. And then you can maybe get five or six poly bags. What I've even seen people being able to do is actually go to the WH Smiths at the end of the day and ask if they've got any poly bags left and they've been able to get 20 poly bags for free just by asking that way or sometimes by of course the price of the paper or whatever it may have been so being able to think and pick up on these special events and special deals and where these things are giving out poly free poly bags or freebies etc is a brilliant brilliant thing to do now, unfortunately, we don't have that much anymore. Um, and really, the main one was the, the free poly bag with the paper. And I did do that for, for quite a lot. There was a few that I missed out on. And there was a few that also I managed to get a hold of. Um, and of course, I would ask family and friends. And I'd say, oh, could you go in as well? Yeah, I'll go in here. And you go in, etc. And you can also go to different branches as well. So then you can, you can pick it up that way. Now, the reason I say, obviously... Um, use your family and friends and, and why wouldn't I just say well why don't you just go in and buy five well the thing is they were pretty strict with this thing when it was around and they didn't want sort of one customer going in and and just taking all the poly bags so therefore you'd have to be a bit smart about it if you wanted to get more than one poly bag but these kind of special events are paramount because it means you can basically get free lego now of course if you are buying the paper and let's say the paper is a pound or the paper is 80 pence or whatever, then, you know, it's not exactly free because if you're getting more than one, you're not going to need more than one paper to read or anything like that. So you are basically paying for the poly bag. But even so, I'd pay 80 pence for a poly bag if I knew it was going to sell for five pounds, four or five pounds, something like that. I'd be happy with that. I'd even pay a pound for a poly bag if it was going to start sell for about a fiver or maybe even six quid because I can just put it in a jiffy bag, send it off, 
maybe a pound through the post or something like that on postage and and i'm good and i've still made some money there and even if i let's say kept those poly bags away i could maybe even make more than five or six pound on those so definitely looking for freebies looking for these special events sometimes you do them at the lego store as well where you will get like a little free build or something like that now i've never gone to that i've never done that personally um but it's possible that that might be something to think about with regards to getting something for free as well so definitely with regards to freebies that is a huge one now of course I was just looking at my list there to see if I wrote it down anywhere else, but I don't think I have. So I think we should cover, inclusive in this tip, uh, in the freebies tip, the freebies from Lego Shop at Home. You've seen me get them on, on, on investing videos. I always buy from Lego Shop at Home when the freebies are on. I don't buy from Lego Shop at Home if there's no freebies on. I, I, I've kind of become a bit of a, um, a, a fanboy for the freebies. I don't, I don't buy at all when, when the freebie's on and I kind of just be like, well, I've got to get a freebie now. I've got to get a freebie. That's how I am. And, um, and so, yeah, you've seen it on my videos. I always get freebies. I always maximize on the freebies as well. I like to, if I can get two or three, then that's brilliant. If that's, if that's possible. There are times when you can actually get three different freebies from Lego Shop at Home. It's quite hard, but there are times that you can do that. And possibly around Christmas or maybe May the 4th or maybe Easter time would be the times that you're most likely able to do that. But I have seen it where you can combine different freebies that they've got uh, given away for different sets and for different price levels. So then you could get two or three freebies. So definitely, Lego Shop at Home freebies, we all know about that, but it is a huge one. It's a huge one that you should, if you're spending 60 quid on Lego at the, at the Lego Shop at Home or at the Lego store, then yeah, get your freebie. Why not? You know, that's the best thing you can do. So number five, we are halfway. Hopefully I'll try and speed this up a little bit so we can be under the half an hour mark. But number five is use reward schemes. So I use Top Cashback, I use Nectar Points, I use my Lego VIP Points, I also use the Honey Browser extension, which I've talked about before. Using all of these things in unison, these reward schemes, reward points, it's brilliant. It's exactly what you should be doing. I mean, if you can use two or three of these things with a purchase that you're getting a free gift on as well through Lego Shop at Home, then you're saving a lot of money on your purchase. In, in essence, you're getting quite a large discount on the money you've spent. You might get a little bit of money back with top cash back. Maybe you can use honey at the same time. So you're getting a little bit of honey gold there. You're getting maybe your VIP points as well. So you see, it adds up and that, that converts into money that you can utilize in the future. That cash back, those VIP points, all the rest of it can be utilized in the future to, to buy more Lego. And, and, and basically, as I say, it acts as a discount on the Lego you are purchasing there and then. And so that's always a brilliant one, using reward schemes. And I cannot stress that enough because in the past, when I was first starting, I kind of was a bit, I didn't really, I wasn't very proactive with it. I might use discounts here and there. I might use top cash back here and there, but I wasn't really that proactive with it. But now I am very proactive with it. And I really, I have been for quite a while and I really do try and get these discounts down, get as much as I can. Uh, so that then, of course, I can maximize the potential on my investment. So yeah, that's that one. Number six, this leads on nicely to this one. Buy on a discount. If you can, I mean, you've seen me in Lego hauls. In fact, most of that Lego I just got recently, uh, I bought that on a discount, maybe between 20 to 40% discount. And on top of that, uh, with certain items, I may have got VIP points if I bought them online, or I may have got honey gold back or whatever it may be. So not only have I bought them on a discount, in fact, actually, some of those sets I got nectar points for. Yeah, indeed, that was it. And uh, so, indeed, I'm getting them on a discount, but I'm also getting something else back as well. So it means there's even a bigger discount. 
you go on Lego shop at home, maybe you have a look in the sale, what's on in the sale. Now, for the last six months or so, the sale's been pretty poor, in my opinion. Now, I've not been on there every week or anything like that to see what's been updated. There might have been some good set on there at some point. But in my opinion, for the last six months, the Lego sale hasn't been all that great. In fact, it might even be for the last 12 months, it's not really been all that great. And uh, so, you know, you can look on there and, and if there are a good set on there for a good discount, maybe 20, you know, you're only going to get 20% off on the Lego sale unless it's some weird freak event. But maybe you get 20% off there, you utilize your VIP points, you utilize your cash back or the rest of it then of course you are winning. So yeah, buy on a discount as well as using your reward schemes and your reward points. So the next one is scout for Lego wherever possible. You've heard me talk about on the hauls, oh, I got this from Lego shop at home. Oh, I got this from another online retail. Oh, I got this from Sainsbury's. Oh, I got this from Tesco. Oh, I got this from wherever, Argos or wherever it may be. And, and that's what I do. I go out hunting. I, I physically go out hunting when I'm going out somewhere. Uh, I don't do that all the time. But when I when I uh, am going out somewhere, let's say, then I will have a look around any shops there that do just generally stock Lego. And so then I'll go there, there, here, there, wherever. Uh, and I'll look online every week. Practically, you know, when I'm buying, when I'm in that buying mood, I will look every day on online. But if I'm just kind of being a bit more casual with it, it might be once every couple of weeks I'll have a look, once a week maybe, because I know I've not really got that much money to invest and I'm just kind of keeping my, my hand in really, let's say, keeping my eye in. So um, yeah, but that is a brilliant tip. Scout for everywhere because that's where you're going to get the discounts. Imagine if you only looked at one place. Imagine you went to Sainsbury's. You go down to your local Sainsbury's uh, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever, and you're going down there, and you go down there, after, and after four weeks, you're thinking, oh, well, I picked something up the first time, but now it's getting stale, I've not really found anything for three weeks. Well, of course, you're just going to the same Sainsbury's, and you're just going back there, back there, and back there. They're only going to clear Lego every now and then, whereas, imagine this, Okay, so you look online at Lego Shop at Home, you look online at iWoo, you look online at Argos, then one day you go down to a Sainsbury's in this town, the next day you go down to a Tesco in this town, the next day you go down to uh, an Argos here or wherever, I don't know, or you go down to another Sainsbury's in a different town. Then what's happening is you've got all this potential for there being discounts at any one of these places. And then let's say you pick up pick up a discount here, then by the time you go back to this Sainsbury's that you went to in three, week, three weeks prior, there's a discount there. I mean, ah, oh, great, there's a discount there now. And so it never becomes stale. You've always got somewhere that you're getting a discount. So that's what I do. I make sure I spread my scouting, my hunting to all these different places. And it means, of course, that I can obviously pick up discounts all over the place and I can, I can keep that keep that coming in uh, and that's brilliant and again this is when I'm in a buying period when I'm not in so much of a buying period I will not at all be this proactive I won't be going here there and everywhere or anything like that I'll be I'll be much more reserved but when I've got the money and when I'm in a buying period yeah here there and everywhere go for it because you can't go to too many places you know I mean, I suppose, unless you're utilising a, a huge amount of fuel and, and that's costing you a, a bomb or anything like that. But really, that's not going to be the case. You know, you're going to be able to go here, there and everywhere and you'll pick things up and, uh, and, and there you go. You've got some you've got some good deals. So it's definitely worth scouting wherever you can for Lego. Now, eBay and Amazon prices. When you are looking for Lego sets, what do you want to be looking for on eBay and Amazon as kind of research? Not to pick items up. I mean, you can pick items up on eBay and Amazon as well. But what I'm talking about here is what do you want to be looking for on eBay and Amazon when you're doing research for your prices and, and whether a set is going to be worth investing in or not? What you want to see on eBay and Amazon is the prices slightly higher than retail even when the Lego set is still available on Lego Shop at Home. If it's still available on Lego Shop at Home and you have 
on eBay and Amazon, higher than retail prices. I'm only talking a pound or two pound. Maybe on certain sets you might see actually that we're going for five pound, ten pound above retail. But even if we're only going for a pound or two above retail, it gives you an indication. Hang on, people in the secondary market are willing to pay slightly above retail, even though they can get it here. Even though they can get it here, they're paying this here. So there's demand for this item. There is some demand there. And that tells you it's an indicator. It's one of these tools. I keep talking about these tools in your armory. It's one of these tools that you can use to have a general idea of should I buy that set or shouldn't I? That is one of those tools and that's what you should be doing. You get an idea of buying a set, you look on Amazon and eBay, you see those prices. Now, yes, are there sets that I buy currently that aren't going above retail price on eBay or Amazon? Yes, there are. And the reason I buy those sets is because of intuition. I've been doing this quite a while. I've been doing this five or six years and I've got a good eye, I've got my intuition, I've got my experience there. So I can kind of think, okay, it's only going for retail or it's going for even maybe a touch below retail on eBay and Amazon. But you know what? I've had past experience of those sets and I feel comfortable still picking up five of them on a, on a small discount or whatever it may be or maybe utilizing my VIP points or freebies with Lego Shop at home. So I'm getting a bit back. So, you know, there are times where I do that. But for a beginner, it's good actually to try and look on eBay and Amazon and see the sets that are a bit above retail because that gives you a bit more confidence that actually these, these sets might very well go up and might do quite well for you. Whereas, you know, doing the thing that I do is for when you've got a bit more experience you know if you know that certain things do well and have done well in the past then you're all right you can you can use a little bit of that gut instinct you know but uh when you know if you've not got much experience behind you trying to stick by the tools a little bit more rigorously is a, a good thing to do so number nine penultimate point and this goes back to the first uh, point actually so is there any interesting minifigures or pieces in the sets? So I told you in the first point, go and, and watch Lego channels, those Lego fan channels, because they know what they're talking about. Well, in those Lego fan channels, you will see people pick up on the minifigures in sets and they'll say, oh, that's a new print on that minifigure. Oh, that's a new minifigure. Oh, I really like the look of that minifigure. Uh, and then you could go down in the comments and people are saying, oh, yeah, that is a new print on that figure. Oh, yeah, I really like the look of that figure. You see what's happening here? We're building up this idea that in that set, there is a new print that is on the, the torso of that minifigure or whatever. And that people like it. Lego fans like it. And so that gives you an indication again. Ah, the, and it's only an indication. It's only one subtle indication but it's an indication nonetheless that that one might be a good one to invest in oh i'll have a look at that on ebay oh i'll have a look at it on amazon oh i'll go to brick set oh i'll go on google shopping to see to use all of these tools that we now have gained to to kind of scout scan the market and see actually yes i am i'm gonna go for that one and then you go for it and then and then it works out or it doesn't work out because it is quite speculative Lego investing. You you can't always know. A lot of it can be kind of a bit oh um, um and ah in. Uh anyway, so that would be that one, and I think that that one is quite important and people don't give it as due consideration as maybe they should. And and I'm guilty of that just as much as in times where, where I've not really thought about that too much particularly. But I do try and keep my awareness tuned to it to a to a, to somewhat of a degree because I, I do think that that is important. And I do think that certain minifigures can attract people to sets. And that, of course, will happen when it's obviously in stock on Lego Shop at home or even in the secondary market. When you've got a good, interesting minifigure in a set, then that might indicate that it would go up in value quite a lot in the secondary market. It's happened before and it will happen again. So that is the penultimate point. The final point then is research general past performance of a theme. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, okay, so we've got the Speed Champions theme. That's a brilliant one to take because past performance has been pretty good on that theme. So you can you can go uh, on sites like Bricksetter and you can uh, Brickset, sorry, and you can literally. It's because you know what I did there. I, I was thinking of Brick Picker because Brick Picker actually has a site. And you can go on the Brick Picker site, and that's another good tip, actually. You can go on the Brick Picker site, and you can research set history and things like that there as well, price history and stuff. Brilliant little site, actually. But uh, Brick Set, you can go on Brick Set, and uh, you can you know type in these sets that have long since retired from the Speed Champions theme. You could even just type in Speed Champions if you didn't know the set numbers. And then you could get those sets. Then you could pull them up. And then you could go on eBay. You could go on Amazon. You could do your hunting. And then you think, oh, well, that one did really well. And there's another set that's on Lego Shop at Home that looks quite similar to that. And maybe this new set might actually do well because these sets in the past over the last four years from within that specific theme have done really well. So maybe it's worth buying this set. Maybe it's worth sticking a little bit not not obviously putting all your eggs in one basket, but just sticking a little bit to that theme for a bit, just to think, well, maybe I, maybe I should invest in that theme a little bit because the past performance of it has been pretty good. And indeed, in Lego investing, there are certain staple themes, shall we say, that we can go to when we're looking for a slightly more secure investment. Speed Champions is, I would say, slightly more one of them. However, what we are seeing at the moment, I've mentioned this in another video, I believe, but what we are seeing at the moment is a, a bit of a tail off with Speed Champions. Not too much to worry about, too concerning at the moment. But I would say in another two years, it might become a little bit more concerning. Uh, what I am seeing with a few of the Speed Champion sets on eBay, less on Amazon, but more so on eBay, although there is a little bit of a presence of it on Amazon with certain sets, is uh, just some of these sets not selling quite as high even when they are on available on Lego Shop at Home. So, you know, as I talked about, the retail price being higher on eBay and Amazon, the retail price on some of the Speed Champions sets at the moment, even though in the past it has been, ha isn't now on the new sets selling above retail. It's back slightly below retail or at retail. Whereas in the past, sets that were out in 2016, 2015, 2017, they, when we were out, even on Lego Shop at Home, available on Lego Shop at Home, they were selling for two, three, four pound above retail price on eBay. And so that's a little bit concerning for me, but it's not too much of a concern right now. Not, not completely. So, you know, Speed Champions is still one of those staple themes that we can go to uh, when we want a bit more of a secure investment. Uh, and so just looking at those themes is brilliant. Now, I did mention, do not put all your eggs in one basket. You can see me, I've got different themes here. I've got freebies in, in this box here. I've got some freebies down there. I've got loads of different stuff. I've got Star Wars, Speed Champions. As you can see, I do invest quite heavily in Speed Champions. I do like it. It served me well. Uh, Star Wars here, Friends. More Star Wars there. Then I've got Harry Potter. I've got a Lego Ideas set there. Got another Lego Ideas set there. Uh, and some more Star Wars. In fact, looking at this, uh, there are, I, I think I want to invest a bit more, maybe in some, uh, for one, I do want to invest in a bit more kind of slightly larger sets, but for two, I maybe want to invest in another theme because as you can see, I mean, I've got a couple of friends sets there and stuff like that, but you know, there's a lot with Star Wars, there's a lot with Speed Champions, and other than that, there's a lot with maybe the free gifts and things like that. So even like looking at my portfolio now, critiquing it, saying to myself, well, hang on, maybe over the last year or so, I've gone a bit heavy on this. I've just maybe pushed a bit of money into this where maybe I could have spread that a bit. You, you've always got to be thinking like that. You've always got to be looking. You've always got to be critiquing yourself. You've always got to be moving forward and thinking, well, you know, OK, yes. The Speed Champions that I've bought, I'm pretty happy with, I'm pretty secure in. Yes, some of the Star Wars sets, I'm fairly happy with. Yes, okay, all these here, I've got 9 or 10 advent calendars that side, the Harry Potter ones and the Star Wars ones. Yes, I know they're safe, I know they're good, and I've checked them on eBay and all the rest of it. But, nonetheless, it's always good to... Um, Think about not putting all your eggs in one basket. Thinking about putting uh, into different things, you know. 
And so that would be if I was, let's say, and I might do a video critiquing my portfolio in a bit more detail, but that would be one of the things that I would critique about my portfolio. I've got maybe three, possibly four at most, main themes that, that I've really invested in quite heavily. And so maybe I could expand that to five, six, seven themes, you know, rather than three or four, um, because that might be advantageous for me. So we always have to be thinking of these things and we always have to be learning and growing and challenging ourselves to 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 go down that route of critiquing ourselves and reflecting upon the things that we've done good and the things that we've done bad. That's the way we grow, you see. And so um, even if, let's say, you've got a good general past performance, it isn't necessarily the best idea to go head first and buy tons of that. And I've done that. I've done that in the past, especially with speed champions. I, in fact, there was one time where, God, I'd say about 70% of my portfolio was speed champions. It's no way near that now. It's probably about 40% or something like that, maybe about 40%. Um, but yeah, there was a time where it was about 70% 70, 70 speed champions. And, and if I wasn't right, and if the speed champion stuff didn't pay off, which it did, but if it didn't, then, you know, I, I could have been in a, a pretty bad place. So you've got to be careful. I mean, yeah, saying that, we always have to assess our risk level as well. So, for example, if you uh, don't really have the finances and uh, you're buying, you're putting all your eggs in one basket and you're, and you're actually spending quite a bit of money, then that's probably not much of a great idea. Whereas if you have the finances and let's say, for example, you're quite young as well, uh, and you're you're quite open to risk, let's say, and risking a bit of money and risking your money, and you're you're happy and comfortable to do that. Then uh, you know it's okay. You can you can put you can put a little bit more of your eggs in one basket. But it really depends on your particular financial situation. And of course, none of this is financial advice. I'm just saying uh, simply, obviously, some of the examples of how people go about it generally. Um, and so with that being said, I will leave it there because before I ramble anymore, because I could ramble for about an hour just on, I mean, we've already done 37 minutes. I could ramble for an hour just on more, more tips and all the rest of it because there's things that I've been speaking about throughout this video. And I thought, oh, maybe I should mention that or maybe I should mention the other. So I might very well do another similar video to this at some point in the future, but it's maybe a, a take, has a different angle, has a different take on it. But yeah, I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, then please do leave a like on it. Leave a comment. Maybe even put some other tips down below if you have any. And uh, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys.